another test drive and this is one of my favorite kind of bills this is a 2010 Wrangler four-door it's not a Rubicon I don't think it's a Sahara and it has an LS3 430 horsepower engine with a 6L80 I really like the 6L80 I have been driving the 8-speed but so far I'm not decided which one I like better so it tells you how good the 6L80 is here's one of the great things about the LS3 it's about 450 horsepower but it's also as mild as can be if you look at this tack, I don't know if you can see it here, we're idling at 550 RPM and it's as smooth as a stock motor but at the same time it still has well over 400 horsepower. We're going to wheel today and the LS3 is so mild and has so much torque that there's no reason in my opinion to get an engine that has, I mean if you want a 500 horsepower engine that's great but once you go beyond the LS3, you're starting to compromise things. You're starting to compromise the idle, getting a little bit of that rump, rump, rump. You're getting away from factory calibrations. This vehicle has a completely stock LS3 GM calibration. It also means it's emissions compliant. It has all the redundant monitoring, monitors, mode 6 data, enhanced digital trouble codes. If you were to get, let's say, a 480 or a 525 horse engine with a GM performance over-the-counter tune, those are not US EPA compliant. They also do not include the production monitoring that you get with, uh, with a production tune. Now what we got here is torque. And I thought I'd show this to you because I use it quite a bit. Um, for you guys that don't want to spend money on a scan gauge, you can get a Bluetooth adapter that goes into your OBD2 port. And it will, see if I can get the sun out of your eyes there. Um, It'll make your smartphone into a scanner. These Bluetooth adapters are available on eBay for $10 on Android. And they're available for Apple too, but I'm an Android guy, so, so I use uh, the Elm 327 Bluetooth adapter. And this will allow you to get basic generic data, coolant, temp, fuel trims, vehicle speed, clear codes, read codes. And face it, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, uh, and you get a check engine light go off, you want to know what it is, whether it's an LS or a Hemi or a supercharged engine, so that you can react to it. And so many guys carry air compressors and tools to change tires, but they don't carry a cheap diagnostic tool. And there's no reason to today, not to today, when these things cost $10. So let's get moving here. This build like I say, it's one of my favorite kind of builds. It's an earlier JK. It's a 2010. And we installed a Mopar Dana 44 front Rubicon axle, which is a heck of a bargain. You can pick them up $2,300, $2,400. Comes with the e-locker installed. And we upgraded the rear D44 to a locker. And just basically got these switches here. We're not going to run through the Rubicon uh, switch panel. As you can see, it doesn't have a Rubicon switch panel, so they wouldn't work anyway. One thing I'm not real happy with in this Jeep is the, the wheel size. I don't know what size they are, but I think they're about 20s. So that gives you a very short sidewall, which doesn't give you the best off-road ride. Uh, it does have metal cloak suspension, which helps a lot. But I prefer the uh, smaller rim and, and more sidewall. So having these e-lockers controlled independently on relays means you can engage them anytime. You can engage them in two-wheel drive, like if you wanted to go up a trail but you didn't want to be in four-wheel drive where you're locking your steering up. You can engage the front in snow and leave the rear open. This is something you can't do with a stock Rubicon. With a stock Rubicon, you have to be in four low, under 18 miles an hour. You have to engage the f rear first and then the front. So there's a lot of inhibitors that you don't have when you, when you do a setup like this. So this, this build has about my favorite powertrain, and that is the Gen 4 LS3 with a 6L80. It has 410 gears, which actually work excellent with these 37s. And it's got plenty of torque off the line. It cruises on the highway at 2,000 RPM at 75 miles an hour for better economy. 
it's right now I think probably the uh, the optimal build. Some of the downsides to the LS3 would be of course its cost which is twice that of a 6 liter. The LS3 is a simple engine. It's compact, it's light, it's all aluminum, it has no VVT, that's variable valve timing, it has no AFM or DOD which is the four cylinder mode. That means it doesn't have the four cylinder mode lifters. So you can spin these up north of 7000 RPM and not damage anything. We do turn up the RPM on some of our custom bills, but a stock 450 horse or 430 horse LS3 we find is putting out about 450 horsepower and that's at a red line of about 6500 RPM which is very safe for the longevity of the engine you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be good at 6500 RPM if you are running in sand under a heavy load or you're doing extreme rock crawling the LS3 may not have the best oil pan you might want to go to a deeper sump pan but for general off-roading it's just fine so the LS3 is extremely mild it runs cool. Let me get this. It runs cool. As you can see here, we've been running at 195 degrees crawling. And this, this Jeep does have a Camaro SS fan, which is probably my favorite fan. It's a little bit quieter than the Pentstar fan. Very powerful. And it's also controlled very well by the GM side. We're using uh, the General Motors controller to uh, control the fan based on temp, uh, trans temp, engine temp, and other parameters.